my name is Naren and in this session I'm going to talk about hashing and consistent hashing. Oftentimes while we are coding, we need to save an item and retrieve it as fast as possible. The real question is how to speed up searching of an item. Consider a case where I have given you a list of items and you need to search an item whether it is present or not. If the list is sorted, then it is much easier. All you need to do is use binary search algorithm and search for that item is present or not. What if the list of items which I have given you is not sorted? In this case, the only option left is you need to consecutively go through each and every items in the list and then find whether it is present or not. Cases like this can be easily accomplished using map. This is something similar to your phone directory where you know the location of the name of a person and then you retrieve the phone number by its name. Inside the computer also same thing happens, something called as hash map or hash table where the goal is to use the key and save a value against the key and retrieve it as fast as possible using the same key. Now to achieve this, what are the components do we need? So all we need is, first one is a key value and then you need a hash function. You need a hash function and then you need a hash table. Let's talk about each component in brief. So the first one is key value, obviously you know the key and you know the value. The second one is hash function. Consider a hash function is something like a black box or you can think of as hash function. When you give some value to it or when you input a value, it emits a large number like this. Okay, this is what it does. So you provide a different input, you get a different large number. And the third component is hash table. So hash table is exactly like the table which you guys know. And here the columns are key and a bucket. Okay, it's two column and you have many rows in it. So the keys starts from something like zero, one, two, three or different values, but for simplicity, let's say zero, one, two, three, four, and so far. So let's take only yeah, up to nine. Okay, it can be something like up to nine, and these buckets are where your value is going to be stored. So let's use the listed components and build the complete flow diagram. Okay. So the first component which we knew was key value pair. Let's take an example, dog value is max. And the second one is cat meow. And the third one is say I'll take a rat girl. Okay. So now the second component we had was hash function. Okay. And the third component we had was the hash table. So we have a total of 10 different locations in our hash table. Write it. Okay. We have a hash table, we have hash function, we have key value pair. Let's try to save this key value pair in hash table. What happens is, as I already explained, you have to give or send the key to hash function first and it is going to generate some large number. So how does it look? Say for now, it looked like one, nine, three, four, three. So this is a large number. And since, okay, now use this hash and find a row in the table and then save that value against it. It's that simple. So all you need to do is go and find this particular row in this table, one, nine, three, four, three. Okay, where is it? 
it's not there because we only have 10 different locations available here. So this is an example, but think of it, our computer have a finite memory, right? So we can't have infinite memory since hash function can generate up to large number, we can't directly map the hash to the value in the big hash table. So instead we do the trick. What is the trick? So we know the total number of rows or uh, the, the locations available here is 10. What we do now is on the hash value, just do a modulo operator. What do you get? You get 3. Okay. Now go to the location 3, that is 0, 1, 2, 3 and save the value over here. That simple. Okay. Now what you need to do is go to location 3 and save the value max. That's it. Done. Okay. So let's do one more uh, thing. So now let's try to save cat. So now you feed cat to the hash function. Now it will emit one more big number, say something like 9. 3, 4, 2, or 5, okay, it's a big number, and what it, what we need to do is, total number of locations, do a modulus operation, so what do we get, we get 5, so now, take this meow value to 5, and then save there, that's it, done, so the next thing is, similarly, you have to save over at, it to hit and then it provides it, it generates some number like 5, 6, 3, 4, divide percentile 10, you get 4. Okay, save the value grr, in the location 4. That's it, it's that simple. So this looks good, right? Now there is a problem. Now, this hash function I explained can give same number for different keys. Oh, now what happens? Now the problem is, hypothetically, this function can return same number for two different inputs. Say something like, I input rat and dog. In both of the cases, what if it returns same number? Say something like, uh, I'll, I'll run through one more example. Say, I'm trying to say, uh, hey, and the value is, Hi, okay. So now let's feed this hey to this function. Now the output it returned turned out to be 5634. Okay, that is something similar what we got for rat also. Now when we do percentile 10, we also get 4. Now I'll go to the location 4 and then try to say hi. It will either overwrite, but we know that the already is, uh, the value is already present. Okay, this is, there is something like collision is happening. Exactly. The term is called as hash collision. So when two different keys gives out the same hash, that's when collision happens. How do we resolve this kind of collision? Now we can't save both gr and hi over here. Now how do we know what value for what key? That will be a difficult situation to figure out. So instead, let's do a simple trick again. If you guys know link list, just link the list. Okay. Instead of directly saving the value, use link lists here. Do one more link and then save high over here. Okay. But still the problem is there. So how do you know what value for what? Instead of just saving the value, you try to save keys also. For this, it's I, and in case of gur, it's rat. That's it. So when there is a collision, you go there, if there is a link list, iterate over the link list and check for the key and the value and retrieve it as fast as possible. Done. Now that you learn how to save key value in hash table, retrieving is also something easier, okay? Now let's say you're trying to retrieve value for dog. Now what? Take this key, you don't know the value, give it to a hash function. It will obviously give out uh, the same hash value like the previous time. Like you get 19343, do a modulus, you get location 3, go to the table, go to the third location and you will see value. Just retrieve it 
I mean, retrograde or it's faster, right? So now all good. But since our computer systems have finite memory, sometimes these locations might not be available or sometimes when we have distributed systems, some computers may, might fail, some computers might be added dynamically without restarting the whole system. So in this case, let's see what happens. So consider this system, okay. Consider these two locations belong to computer two and these locations belong to computer one. Now, if this computer goes down, these two locations will not be available, obviously, right? So now, the hash table remains same, but the total count, instead of 10, it is eight, right? So let's write the new count, eight. Now let's run the same example. Now I want to retrieve dog and its value, associated value. Now if I give it to the system, function, hash function, now it will obviously return 19343. When you do percentile 10, now you won't do percentile 10 because the updated total locations available is still 8 because the system got, went off. So now instead of 10, we need to do 8. Okay, this is something after this locations are not available. Now instead of 3, we get something different. In this case, we get 7. What we're supposed to get was 3. Now we got 7. If we go to location 7, we have nothing over here. What if we had something? Obviously, we get wrong values. And this is not acceptable. So now, in this case, we need to remap all of our data. In this case, we have to go through each and every key and do a remapping of data, okay? And that is tedious task. What if we have about 1,000 or 10,000 of these keys? It takes a lot of time, right? To solve these kind of problems, there is a better solution instead of going for a conventional hash table. And this is something new, okay? This is called as consistent hashing or consistent hash ring. Let's see how this works, okay? So the consistent hashing works on a simple, similar idea, but little twist in it. So earlier in a normal hashing, we used to know the all the available memory locations in our computer, and then we used to consecutively uh, name the keys in our hash table with consecutive number, right? So the key used to be uh, bucket. So the key used to be consecutive numbers from 0, 1, 2, 3 until the available memory locations. But the twist here is instead of knowing memory uh, available memory location, we are going to assign these keys randomly, totally random. Okay. Now consider uh, so we took some random numbers and assigned it. So what do we assign? So let's assign some random numbers over here so that random numbers being say 1,101 okay so here say 3,030 so here 475 say so something like big random numbers okay say here 9,001 and this is say 9,900 uh, yeah, zero, zero, okay. So we have assigned some random numbers over here. So now what happens, let's do the same, uh, uh, let's try to save this key value pairs. So now if we want to save key hey and hi, right? So for hey, we pass this key to hash function, we got, okay, some hash number. So consider that we got as 2071, okay? Now what we need to do is take this hash number. Unlike earlier, you don't need to do a modulus or division operation. Directly go and find the location. So if you go and find it here, we won't find it. But what we need to do is find 
a bucket or a key which is greater than itself. So in this case, instead of searching for exactly the row with the key 2071, find a row which is greater than that. So in this case, the greater one is not 1011. The next immediate greater thing is 3030. So now just go to this location and save the value of i. That's it. Okay. Now you might be thinking, what if one more key also get less than 3030? So consider we pass dot key to the hash function and that resulted one, now say 2005. So now what? Now also it will try to find the next thing. Exactly, this is not. This is what it is. 3030 and obviously save it here max and dual interest that's it put it in the link list so that happens for this all of these pieces of value say if you want to save that consider we got something like 9015 what do we need to do in this case go and find okay this is not not, not yeah this is what it's so save grr over here so now let's save cat and meow also. So in this case, what happens, consider we got value, uh, something like 10,100, 10,105, 15, okay? So in this case, what? We search, uh, well, nowhere it's fitting. So the next number is not available. In this case, go back to the very first row available and save it there. So in this case, the cat's value meow is saved in here. So meow. Okay. So you can see there is something like a ring happening. So this is how consistency hash ring works. It's that simple. Consistent hashing doesn't solve the problem of looking things up. Instead, it solves the problem of looking up for the key and its location. In this hash table, you can see that there are multiple values are saved against each memory location. You know, unavailability of a particular location doesn't disturb the whole table, unlike the previous hashing algorithm where Unavailability of a particular location used to disturb everything and we needed to remap all the values um, against their hash keys. But in this case, consider this particular location is not available. Still, all this um, key value and the hash mapping is still valid. Unlike previous algorithm, it was like the whole table will be invalid. But in this case, only this particular location will not be available, but the rest of the location is still available. What if we want to save some value? Here, since this location is not available because of a ring, it goes to the next available location that is 1011. Okay, that's how, or that's why the consistent hashing is really important in computer science. The examples are the applications of computer, uh, sorry, the consistent hashing uh, varies from load balancing, caching, or some of the great applications like, or some of the great databases like Cassandra uses consistent hashing to save the data in different nodes. A lot of times, a uh, lot of distributed system uses consistent hashing to locate different nodes or the workers or uh, tasks and etc. I am not going to talk a lot about the application of consistent hash ring. Instead, I leave you a lot of links and documents which talks about consistent hashing applications. Feel free to read this document and understand better. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit like button and share with your friends. Thank you.